everybody, welcome to my crystal walkthrough. I'm your host, Diogen Z. And Egad, it's our rival, Silver, you again. There's no need to panic. I don't bother with wimps like you. Speaking of weaklings, the city's gym leader isn't here. I wonder why. Supposedly taking care of a sick Pokemon at the lighthouse. Huh. <laughs> Boo-hoo. Just let the sick Pokemon go. Pokemon that can't battle is worthless. Why don't you go train at the lighthouse? Yep, the lighthouse. Who knows? It may make you a bit less weak. I like how he doesn't even give us an ounce of strength. He's like, no, nah, it's not going to make you stronger. It's just going to make you less weak. So, the Olivine City's gym leader is out. For noble cause. So, we won't go there now. We're going to instead check out what Olivine City has to offer. You can already see what the Pokemon it's got. But today I want to point your eyeballs to the right side of the screen with the new border chart which is a fishing chart. Still in development, not sure if I like it, the format's a little sloppy in my opinion, but let me tell you how to decode this if I bring it back, if I bring it back. Here's how it goes. You look at the Pokemon's icon, that's what you can catch. The G, or the O, G, and S stand for Old Rod, Good Rod, and Super Rod. Those are the rods you can use on the Pokemon icons. And those little circles, the yellow circle is only to be caught in the daytime, and the blue circle signifies only to be captured in the nighttime. The half yellow, half blue, that means 24 hours of the day you can find this Pokemon with that rod. And that's how you figure it out. But since Olivine also has water that you can plane on surf, I also included the surfing chart below. So hopefully it provides you guys with ample information. Little did I know there were Corsola here. I only thought that Corsola were near Cherry Grove City, to be honest with you. It wasn't until I looked at my guide that I realized that they also lived in Olivine City. And I don't know about you, but personally I remember Corsola very well from the World Island episodes. Kind of a mini-series within the Johto season of the anime. And it was pretty awesome. Just did a little bit of a jump cut there because we rehealed, and I just switched some of my items around because we were walking around with a full pack, and we can't pick anything up useful that way. Oh look, maybe she's got a Thunderstone for us already. Nope, just a battle. Okay, well I'm gonna go battle her, get the experience, and be right back. And I'm back with the experience points earned, and off to earn some more, in the lighthouse. Now this place was pretty freaking awesome. I remember this back in the day vividly. This was, uh, the music especially. You know, something about it, very nautical. And, uh, the walls, some kind of green, seaweedy, olivine, ocean spray mist, cement stuck in my mind. And then of course all the gentlemen and sailors that we had to take down around here. And also I believe there were a few crazy bird dudes up here too. Probably near the higher levels. They're only crazy because they get up so high that the lack of oxygen gets to their brain. So they start believing they could fly. Let's just hope they try flying from the ground first and not off of the lighthouse. I'm a Noctowl! Watch me soar! Ah, into the sea! Trust me, I meant that. I'm really a Swana. I was just landing gracefully. Oh wait, there's no Swana in the second generation games. Ha ha! You look like you want to fight. Men of the sea are always spoiling for a good fight. Yep, like I said, looking for a good fight. And that's what you'll find in this lighthouse right here, guys. This is not only a required part of the game, but an excellent time to get some experience points for that Chikorita you may have chosen if you're having difficulties raising it right now. Again, I will warn you, there are some gentlemen 
type trainers that have Growliths. I believe they have Growliths. I know they have Noctowls and other bird type trainers. So you don't want to bring your grass types out then. But there are plenty of sailors with water Pokemon abound to raise the stats of your grass or even electric type. And especially the Poliwhirls. Poly, Poliwhirl. Yes, the Poliwhirls, especially because they're evolved and evolved Pokemon, as you know, give you more experience points. Something I want to apologize for, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier in the video, but it's something kind of unavoidable and should be fixed after this video, is that you'll probably notice the sound of the game is a bit off sync. Unfortunately, this is the last of the cruddy recordings, as I want to call it, with the old method of capture that I used that kept getting the audio out of sync. Now, I tried using virtual dub on this, and still, this was kind of the best it could do. Thankfully, this episode is seasoned with mostly songs that I choose that are separate from the game. It's other game music, and it goes pretty well. So I don't have to worry about syncing up for most of the video. But I do want to apologize for you who do take notice of that, because I took notice, and I was like, ugh. Alright, well this is the last batch of recordings that will be like this. But, uh, funny, uh, funny editing for me ahead. Uh, my new batch of recordings didn't go over the best, I would say. Uh, I made some noobish errors. Let's just say I left Fraps running, recording the game audio, and, uh... I set it to record the game audio through the speaker, so it would get direct sound, but also, while I was playing, I was listening to my media player. And guess what guys, it picked that up too. <laughs> so I'm going to have to overdub the overworld music for the next few footage reels. But after that, I swear to you, the sound glitches will end. I finally figured out how to get Fraps to be compatible with my capture here and it's gonna run smoothly. So we'll still have sped up battles, we might even have some live commentaries coming up, who knows? Crazy stuff. More gentlemen! I travel the world to train my Pokémon. I wish to battle with you. You travel the world and come to a lighthouse. You know, my dad actually worked on a lighthouse when he was younger. Somewhere off the coast of uh, Florida, I believe. Pretty sweet job. It was totally desolate. He was pretty much the only one on the island. And it was his job to make sure that the lights were functioning and everything was running smoothly. Make sure that the Ampharos didn't get sick, which uh, unfortunately happened in this lighthouse. That's the sick Pokemon, our rival Silver back at the beginning of the es this episode was suggesting was weakening the gym leader status. I don't get that. Compassion for a Pokemon that somehow weakens your training? Ah, eh, well, what does he know? He's lost to us in every fight that we fought him in. Dana, do you have a Thunderstone for me? And... No, you want to battle again. Wow. That's two battles in one episode, Dana. You're going a little crazy here. Well, I will not be rushing out of the building like I did with the cafe back there to go battle her, because we've got plenty of experienced trainers right here. And there are even trainers after we get to the top, so... Don't let your guard down for anything, and also bring a bunch of potions if you don't feel like going back down to the Pokémon Center every single time. Unlike Pokémon Black and White, Crystal, Gold, and Silver didn't implement that element of doctors and nurses along the routes to make your journeys to healing a lot shorter. It was a good element they added in the 5th gen, but while you're playing 2nd, just bring some potions. Sailors are both kind and strong. How about you? I'd say we're a kind fellow. Also, ranging in the strong type. Getting stronger every day. As soon as our Pokemon start going on an evolution rampage, uh, oh yeah, that's when we will wreak havoc on the Johto region. And you know what I'm talking about, guys. The point where 
your team finally clicks, where they reach an experience level where all their moves, all you have to do is switch them out to be super effective, and it's insta-win. We are nearing that moment day by day. That's a good thing we're nearing the moment in sped up mode. I'll tell you what, some of these battles took over six minutes. Six minutes! But that's what happens when you have kind of a wall stallish team and skip looms thanks to that. But I don't think you guys mind. I don't think you mind at all. I keep talking. We keep on walking. And extra music plays. The way I see it, it's like bonus stuff. Oh wow, I was here to watch a walkthrough, hear commentary, and oh, my ears are being treated to an additional awesome treat. Yep, he too has powerful my chops. It'd be funny if uh, the trainers in the future games, I could see them implementing this trainer animations, because you know it's only a matter of time. It, I don't see why they can't animate that sprite, just add a few more. But you'll have sailor dudes and buff bodybuilders posing with their machops and machokes, looking hella pathetic with their four-armed machamps overshadowing them completely. So I will await the day for that, eagerly. And hopefully we can keep Eevee from fainting too much. A uh, tactic that I might be using and you might see me using during the course of this LP is spamming potions for happiness. So, if that doesn't give you a hint, there are two ways... Oh, damn it. Ah, uh, lost happiness. I mentioned the happiness mechanic in the last episode, but it's dictated by a number of things. Winning battles, keeping it in your party, having it ha eat items or consume items like potions... And you may see me, over the course of this LP, spam that maneuver on Pichu and Eevee. So, take guesses now, Umbreon or Espeon. Who am I working to evolve towards? Oh man, I don't think we have enough berries for this one. This Pokémon always kept the sea lit at night. Actually, I think it was the moon. But it suddenly got sick! It's gasping for air. Well, no wonder, lady. Look at the walls. They're all moldy green. There's a wonderful pharmacy in Sea and Wood. But that's across the sea. And don't you see? I'm a steel-type trainer. I can't swim across the ocean. I'll just sink. So please find medicine for me. Please. Nah. Looks like you're shit out of luck, lady. But we will take your items! <laughs> Super potions. Yeah, now nah, we'll go get that medicine. Because otherwise she will not return to the gym. And that's no bueno for us because we can't continue on our Johto journey. So, let's get that medicine. Which we're probably going to end up doing in the next episode. Because we're coming on the time limit. But yes, uh, using items like potions, even though they don't do a lot of healing per se, I think it's like, what, 10 or 20 hit points restored? It cons it's considered to be an item, so that raises the happiness of your Pokémon to a certain degree, a certain amount. The exact calculations for how much happiness is raised, I'm not sure. But I can tell you that the more items you use, the more happier your Pokémon will be. It's basically the more attention you will spend on your Pokémon yields better results. And another method you can do I, that I left out is going to Goldenrod City in the basement zone, actually, underneath all the casinos, the shady zone that we found those freaks in with the Voltorbs and the Magnemites and those things. There are Haircutter Brothers down there, and that, too, raises the happiness of your Pokémon. And later on, you'll have a chance to meet Gary Oak's sister in uh, Pallet Town. She'll give out massages to your Pokémon, which also raises happiness, but for now, I'm going to try relying on the potion spamming method.